implantable medical devices like this pacemaker can be wirelessly reconfigured. This is great for the patients that they don't need surgery, but it also brings serious security concerns. Here at the University of Birmingham, we are working to make sure that these devices are secure. And my research focuses on, on embedded devices security, just like this uh, defibrillator or smart card, like the Oyster card. Um, as part of our research, we, we analyze every device we can get our hands on and uh, we look for security vulnerabilities in them. Um, as part of my, pro my research, I have identified vulnerabilities in, 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 in the chip that is used in the Oysters card, which allowed me, for instance, to top up the credit on the, on the card and then uh, travel for free. And then, did you do that? Um, we did not travel for free because that would be illegal. Okay. <laughs> uh, but we, we uh, informed the manufacturer and, and, the, or transport, and, and transport for London and we, we demonstrated that it was possible to, to travel for free. And this was uh, some time ago, and by now they have replaced the chip in all of the Oyster cards. And now um, the, 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 the system is much more secure and, and your money is not at stake because attackers could have actually stolen your credit from your card. Um, other things we have studied are, are card keys and this remote in, in, in the card keys. And we demonstrated that it's possible for, for, for most cars out there to actually open the cars and start the engine without having access to the, to the real car key. And again, we have informed all of the manufacturers about these vulnerabilities and they have now updated their security systems and now cars are harder to steal. Cool. Um, we have also looked into uh, banking apps and the way they communicate to the to to the banks and we found uh, some serious vulnerabilities in, in, in this connection and which allowed an attacker in, maybe in the same Wi-Fi network to retrieve the user's credentials and the, once they have that they could you know deplete someone's uh, bank account and again we together with the government uh, we talked to the banks and they have uh, been able to update the banking apps and, and then now uh, people's in, in bank account is more secure because of that. In, as you can see in our discipline, it's, uh, it's really hard to prove that a particular product is secure. And the way that security evolves is by, by this exercise where we uh, look into security system, we find vulnerabilities, we sort them out, we fix them, and then, uh, they, then they, the manufacturers produce a new version of the product which, which is more and more secure, raising the bar for, for, for attackers uh, that want to compromise the system. So um, here, this kid who is a PhD student in our team, and, uh, she will tell you a little bit about her research. So I'm just starting my second year. Um, and the thing I'm looking at is um, fault injection. So if you've got something like um, maybe a bank card, you might want to try and inject a fault in it, like make it go wrong. And in the process of making something go wrong, you get a, you get a wrong output. And sometimes you can use that output to work out the cryptography or the kind of the secret on the bank card and if you can work out the secret on the bank card maybe you can use the bank card without needing to know the pin number and that's the area of research that I'm looking into is if someone does a fault on something how can we find out what they've done and whether or not that can be used to get the secret out of the bank card so I'm particularly looking at fault injection into hardware devices okay well if you look if you like what you we have been describing, please leave us a comment below. Thanks.